como están? This is Wild on Tuesday and thank you for joining my channel. Please hit the like, the subscribe and the bell for future notifications. This week we're going to be going over the topic, what is Rico and how does it affect motorcycle club? Let's go! Yo, como están? It's Wild on Tuesday again. Let's get to the left lane. Thank you for joining my channel and let's get on the road. This week's topic, a lot of things you hear on the news or biker news is RICO. And a lot of people don't know exactly what RICO is, what a RICO charge is, what RICO act. So we will go over this and go over the definition of RICO. Now, RICO stands for Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act. I mean, it was passed in 1970. It's a federal law and it's designed to combat organized crime in the United States. It allows prosecution, civil penalties for the racketeering activity. It's performed as part of the ongoing criminal enterprise. This may include like illegal gambling, bribery, kidnapping, murder, money laundering, etc., etc., etc. To convict a defendant under RICO, the government must prove, so it has to prove that the defendant engaged in two or more instances of racketeering. And that the defendant directly invested in a maintained interest or participated in the criminal enterprise affecting interstate or foreign commerce. So, and what does it have to do with motorcycle clubs? A favorite target of attorneys in the U.S. are motorcycle clubs. What makes motorcycle clubs such an easy target is that most clubs have a formal membership. They are a clear organization. It has a hierarchy and written bylaws. Now remember, looking at elements of racketeering it's not difficult for the government to allege an enterprise. What the feds will then do is try and take actions of each member of the club and rope them together and imply that they had some sort of connection to the club. So you have these clubs that are massive, right? They're big, they have so many people, hundreds, thousands of people, 5,000 people, and they account for, and they, and they can keep accounting for what will happen in regards to if one person or two or three people might be doing some type of criminal activity, since their connection is with a club, the feds can try to rope the club from the actions of that person or those people, or they'll try at least. According to the federal law, a federal recall enterprise is defined as any group of individuals who associate with each other for a common purpose. It does not need to be really a formal business entity, such as a court, but maybe informal association of people. So they can group folks together and go after any group that looks like an organized organization. I mean, like MCs, right? We wear you know, a sort of a uniform. We have our cuts, our colors, rags, whatever you want to call it. There's a hierarchy, right? A president, vice president, some officers. And that's what you get from the types of clubs that have, like, like when I talked about in previous videos of charter versus chapter. In chapters, there's a president, there's a state boss, regional, national. You have different hierarchy steps, and that's easier for the Fed to try to crack down and screw the club over with a RICO charge. Now, you got street gangs that are generally prosecuted as illegal enterprises, even though they're very, very rarely have any structure. There is no requirement that an enterprise has to have a command structure, nor is there a rule that there has to be a fixed rule with, within an enterprise. The alleged legal group does not even have to have a name. They don't have to conduct a meeting, nor have any initiation requirements. So one moment, they say that there has to be a hierarchy. The, then the next minute, they don't even have to, a freaking, it doesn't freaking matter. They can still go after a club that has no organization. So think about that. This was designed for the Mafia back in the 70s. They even tried to crack down on anti-abortion groups with RICO. Now all this to understand though is a RICO charge with its, it carries a maximum of 20 years in prison. That's for one charge. And they go, more than, they go after people more than one charge. There is no floor on this possible sentence for a base RICO charge, meaning there is no mandatory minimum. So they can hit you up with a minimum of 10 to 15 years. 
when looking at the definition of the word commerce as used in the definition that you guys spoke about it a little, a little bit ago, I mean, it means a lot of things, but generally the movement of money, goods, services from one state to another satisfies this requirement. That is the easiest element for the government to prove in a criminal trial for RICO. And you get examples all the time. If one group gets caught using guns, if those guns were manufactured in another state, that actually hits a check box, a check mark on the box. Well, that's it in just a nutshell, what RICO means, how that affects motorcycle clubs. It's one of the major things they go after, not just for one percenters, but they go after 99% clubs and smaller clubs. Basically, any threat they're going to go after, attorneys love it. This affects anyone that wears a cut. Anyone that has a vest. Any biker. If you're an independent that does crimes and is known to hang around with a club, now that club has heat on it. We talk about general topics here and there, but this is very an important topic. So, all right, guys. Well, that's it till next week. Much love and respect. Peace.